it's Jared Merlin, and forgive the glasses. Um, my other squarish kind of glasses broke, so I had to make do with these ones for right now. But uh, yeah, I don't like them, but I gotta get I gotta get another pair. Um, I am doing this video today for those of you who suffer from sinus problems. Um, I have a form of chronic rhinitis. I've had sinus problems since, oh God, I want to say back in my early 30s and like 33 years old, maybe even prior to that. Um, I had watched a friend of mine, Angela's daughter at the time she was a baby. And I ended up getting sinusitis from that. And my friend at the time told me, because then, now I got sick and, you know, I ended up with sinusitis. She told me to buy the saffron stuff. It'll help clear your nasal patches so you can breathe. Well, being as young as I was didn't dawn on me to read the box and the instructions. It just, I was so glad to be breathing again. But uh, clearly the box tells you not to take more than seven days. And, um... Let's just say I got addicted to it, and I've been using nasal sprays ever since. I've stopped. I've gone back. I've stopped. I've gone back. It's just been an absolute nightmare. Um, of course, you know, you get the NTs telling you, oh, get a neti pot, um, do the neti rinse, or even the nasal thing they have on television, Navage, I think it's called, and... Uh, yeah, I'm not spending that kind of money, especially because you need filters with that thing. So I'm like, yeah, forget that. So, um, basically, I the last ENT I saw tried to do some um, surgery on my turbines in my face, and um, that didn't help the problem at all. <laughs> it, I was off of the Afrin, let the sinuses heal, still couldn't breathe, and. I have a deviated septum on my left side, so basically I don't use nasal spray on that side. I just basically use, um, I have this little bottle here. Um, there's no sinus medication in it. There's uh, spring water, salt, and baking soda, and I use that on my left nostril. And on my right, I use this like two or three times a day. This is actual nasal spray, but I only use like two or three puffs, like in the morning, um, late afternoon, and before I go to bed, so I can breathe when I go to bed. But um, yeah, I still can't get away from the nasal spray, which I'm gonna have to see me another ENT because the one that I had before, I'm, I'm not confident she's the best person for the job. So anyway. And um, I just did the neti pot. Now, the neti pot's in my bathroom, so I can't show you that. But um, um, I take about, I have a little tiny spoon. I take about two small spoonfuls of this. And uh, what I do, use spring water. Do not use tap water from your bathroom tap, from your sink tap in the kitchen. Get a bottle of spring water. Warm it up. What I do is I fill my uh, bathroom sink up with warm water. You know, I pull the plug, let it sit there, and I let this sit in there so that it warms the water up because trying to gargle cold salt water, I guess, does nothing for, because I have a lot of phlegm buildup in my throat. Um, I'm constantly choking on mucus all day long because of the sinus problem I have. And I've had this problem for years. And um, it seems like the only thing that helps with the mucus is the neti pot at night, um, gargling with the spring water and the salt with warm water. And um, I'm also on a medication called Monolucast. Um, I did find out when I moved from Massachusetts, I didn't have any allergies when I lived in Massachusetts. But fortunately, I live in Florida now. So... I have to take this little square pill, and um, I take that before I go to bed at night, and it basically not only helps with the mucus, um, it also helps with the allergies, um, basically flare-ups and stuff like that, because I have also had shortness of breath with all the mucus buildup. Like I said, I'm constantly choking on mucus, and thankfully, most of the mucus that I 
cough up is clear and milky. Um, if it starts getting colored, then that means there's an infection, and that's like the last thing I want. So I'm basically right now, until I get this sinus thing taken care of, um, I mean, I'm going to be having allergies the rest of my life, so I'm going to be doing this probably the rest of my life. But I just wanted to, you know, share with you guys how I'm dealing with my situation because um, I still have to have, uh, what is it called, an endoscopy done. Um, because I'm constantly, like I said, there's, I feel like there's a lot of mucus phlegm build up in my throat. And um, I did have acid reflux once. And um, I know when I saw the first ENT like a year or two ago, she told me she saw some damage in my esophagus. It wasn't bad damage, but it was something that needed to be looked at. That's so... And I get scared when I hear stuff like that because usually when, you know, you get damage from acid reflux in your esophagus, you up your chances of throat cancer. And that right there just scares the living hell out of you. It's just like, yeah, oh, no, no. So um, I got to have an endoscopy done for that. And um, at least I know what causes the um, acid reflux now. So I, I basically do a lot of intermittent fasting. And uh, that keeps the acid reflux down. Um, I can't have, and plus I stopped taking sugars anyways after I got my fatty liver disease. But sugars, mints, chocolates, anything like that gets me acid reflux. So I, I know it causes my acid reflux and I stay the hell away from it. And um, yeah, it, it's rough to get old. Yeah. But I mean, even younger people have the same problem as I do. Like my brother, he used to get um, acid reflux. And his was due to the, my brother would eat an entire bag of Doritos. Even though it caused him to have acid reflux, he'd be popping, you know, antacids, Tums, what have you, just to stop the acid. But those antacids actually aren't good for you either. Those are also danger as well. Uh, they can cause liver damage and kidney damage. Um, and that's why when the doctor wanted to put me on Pepsid AC or something something like that to control stomach acid. And you know, you know me, I'm one of those people that do my research and, and um yeah, I I'm sorry. As much as it helps the acid reflux, I don't need kidney problems, liver problems, you know, just to stop the acid reflux. So I said there's gotta be another way. So yeah, I did find the other way. Um stopped the stuff that caused the acid reflux. Intermittent fasting, believe it or not, I basically don't eat for 20 hours a day. And then after the 20 hours, I don't chow down on everything. I'm just saying it's like I have four hours where I can I can eat, you know, just foods that I know are not going to give me acid reflux. But it's also healthy whole foods. Um, like I said, I got away from the sugars and all that stuff like that. Cakes, cookies, stuff. I don't do that stuff anymore. So... But yeah, and I still have the sinus problem, which is going to be taken care of. But um, yeah, and I have allergies now because I live here in Florida. And I, never had, I never had a problem with allergies when I lived in New England. I never had allergies. And um, the ENT tried to tell me, well, you had the sinus condition, so you had to have had allergies in Massachusetts. Well, newsflash for you, I didn't wasn't choking up mucus all the time. I wasn't coughing it up. I, I didn't have shortness of breath when I lived back in Massachusetts. When I came down here, I did. Yeah, so I'm trying to argue with an ENT. Anyways, I just wanted to share that information with you all. Good night.